Has the Osborne family taken a whole new level in dysfunctional as little Normie is forced to go head to head against his own grandfather, Norman? Well, let's hop into the pages of Red Goblin issue number four and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join this issue, we're introduced to Jerry, a working stiff on the Oscorp security team, who, as we quickly learn, has actually gotten in over his head with gambling debts. And now the only way he can get out from under all of this is to steal the gold goblin suit for Hammerhead. Obviously, this heist is going to be a lot easier said than done, but it clearly shows how much this guy fears Hammerhead if he's willing to cross Norman Osborn. Speaking of Norman, he's out of the hospital following the end of the previous issue and once again babysitting Normie for Liz while she's away with Stanley. Things are pretty tense between grandson and grandfather right now as Norman is pretty damn certain he knows Normie's symbiotic secret. In a very funny bit of fourth wall breaking, Normie says that his grandpa is staring right through him right now, almost as if he could read his thoughts in bubble form above his head. Ha, <laughs> comics. Now, as we've seen ever since losing his sins to the Sin Eater, Norman has gotten a lot nicer, but that's not to say he's gotten any less crazy. To test his theory about Normie being the new Red Goblin, he decides to throw an inert pumpkin bomb at him. Naturally, Rascal takes over Normie's body to defend him, and the Red Cat is out of the bag now. It's in this scene we actually get two really nice bits of characterization for Normie. One, he bemoans the fact that everyone in his family has to be so damn smart because it means no one can have any secret to themselves for long. And also, Normie vows to not go all cyber new type on his grandpa. That is yet another Gundam reference. I love that that is part of Normie's character and not just a throwaway hello fellow kids line of throwaway dialogue that it very easily could have been in any other series. Of course, now that Grandpa Norman knows that his grandson has fused with a symbiote and become the new Red Goblin, he vows to remove it from Normie by any means necessary. And wouldn't you know it, in his spare time after his own run-in with the Carnage symbiote and becoming the original Red Goblin, Norman actually put a lot of work into building a brand new machine that can do everything he wants and more by making use of sonic scalpels. Once again, what I really love about this scene is how the series refocuses once again on the whole symbiote as boy and his dog story allegory. Normie doesn't want Rascal to be hurt and says that maybe Grandpa Norman has a bad opinion of symbiotes because he was fused with one of the worst symbiotes ever to live. In fact, Normie even calls back to his little revelation from the end of the previous issue saying that there are no bad dogs, only bad owners. Maybe Normie doesn't have to be saved from Rascal. Maybe Rascal needs to be saved from the Osborns. What I think really sells this exchange to is that despite Normie's arguing, he still has to go ahead with what his grandfather is telling him to do because, well, he's a kid and he does have to listen to his elders. Norman tries to calm Normie down by saying that he plans to give the rascal symbiote to the Fantastic Four and that maybe he can go and visit him. You know, again, really building the whole dog allegory. He's not dying. We're just sending him to a nice farm upstate where he can play with other symbiotes. Of course, Norman is totally lying and this machine was never just meant to separate Normie from Rascal, it was also meant to kill the symbiote once and for all, which I actually like as a character bit for Norman. He's grown nicer after losing his sins, but he's still a duplicitous liar when it comes to getting what he wants. Normie curses this betrayal by his grandfather, but luckily for him, Rascal is ultimately saved when Jerry's plan to steal the gold goblin suit means that he has to cut the power, meaning the machine, turns off just in the nick of time. Of course, Rascal is royally pissed and plans to take out his anger on Norman for trying to kill him. In fact, he blasts him out of a frickin' top floor window and he probably would have fallen to his death too if Norman weren't able to summon a goblin glider to help him out. And hey, speaking of gliders, and I was, you're probably thinking to yourself, even if Jerry was able to steal the gold goblin suit, how the hell does he plan to actually get it out of the building? He's not gonna fly it, is he? How would he even be able to? The answer is he does try and fly it, an idea that instantly backfires on him as he begins careening across the building, causing untold amounts of destruction. Eventually, Jerry lands at the feet of Normie Osborne. He says that he's not going to hurt him, but the second he puts his hands up, he ends up dropping a bunch of goblin explosives all over the floor. The slightest move in the wrong direction could kill both of them, but thankfully it's at this very moment Rascal realizes that his host is in danger, and so he takes over Norman's body just long enough to deactivate the explosives. Once Rascal and Dylan are reunited, they really do read Norman the riot act. They say that despite Norman's gut telling him that all symbiotes are evil, little devils on your shoulder that stoke your worst instincts. In truth, they've only ever been mirrors. And if it wasn't painfully obvious already, it's not like
like someone couldn't do a lot of damage and get a lot of people killed in the suit he's choosing to wear these days. Because really, it doesn't matter if you're red or gold, what matters is the strength of your own personal character, and Normie and Rascal vow to continue to grow together as a team. And so that was Red Goblin issue number four, everyone, and overall I thought it was a pretty fun and entertaining little done in one. Obviously, it was only a matter of time before Norman discovered that his grandson was the new Red Goblin, and I'm glad they didn't beat around the bush for too long. Again, Norman has been just on such an interesting character journey from the Christopher Cantwell Gold Goblin series to this right now. It's really compelling to see him try and demonize all symbiotes because of his own experience instead of looking inward and asking some tough questions about himself and what maybe he brought to a symbiote relationship. I'm also really liking the creative team continuing to circle in on this idea of the symbiote as a boy and his dog allegory. You don't really get a lot of those in comic books, and I think it actually serves this series well. Yeah, the whole Goblin Underground Phil Urich stuff kind of got put on the back burner as we have this one breather issue because the next one is going to be part of that big Carnage Reigns tie-in. Which, honestly, I'll be interested to see what this book actually brings to that crossover and vice versa, especially because so much of this series seems so fly by the seat of its pants and experimental, but in a good way. Overall, I would give this one another positive 8 out of 10. I know, I'm as shocked as anyone that I ended up liking this series as much as I did. Like, literally, none of this should be working, yet Red Goblin is actually becoming one of the most pleasantly surprising things on the shelf right now. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.